Hello everyone! Remember when I tested the K-Silver Hall Effect sticks here in the channel? I removed them from the RG505 and installed them on my Joy-Cons. And initially it wouldn't work, it wouldn't even calibrate. Eventually I got them to work by using a magnet to change the magnetic field. They worked fine for a while, but when I put the console to sleep, it would lose the calibration and you had to repeat the process all over again. Since then I considered those ticks unusable because of this problem. Then finally Gullykit released the first Hall Effect ticks compatible for the Joy-Con and the rest is history. But recently those Hall Effect ticks from K-Silver have resurfaced online and with additional instructions on how to make them work on Joy-Cons. Turns out that by soldering one additional wire you will feed more power to the sticks and this will make them work properly. So I had to test this out and order myself a pair. Also, those sticks are even cheaper than the Gully Kit ones. On my main Joy-Cons, I use the Gully Kit analog sticks on my green and pink pair and on the yellow and red I have the normal potentiometer sticks. So you might be wondering why the hell do I still use potentiometer sticks? Well, the answer is simple. The potentiometer sticks has no outer dead zones. As you can see here, when the stick reaches the end of the travel, the input on the switch reaches the end as well. But on the gully kit ones, it reaches the max input before the stick reaches the end. Another detail is that the original sticks has less resistance than the gully kit ones. This is something that I haven't noticed initially, but after playing with them for a while I definitely felt the difference. It was even mentioned in the Nintendo Life channel. The sticks are tough. Like, really tough. I'm not saying that they're like impossibly hard to move or anything like that, but um, suffice it to say that they are stiff and they're sort of sticky and sort of gungy and just not very nice and they do require more force to move. I also, he did this interesting test using a scale. Around about halfway, how much weight that requires. So for example, this one, between 60 and 70 grams. That, that, that's a lot of pressure, just, just saying. This is one that's been broken in over the course of about three months. Bit less, but still around 60 grams. This is a brand new Joy-Con, you know, standard stick in there and everything. Halfway. Yeah, about 30 or 40 grams, and a well-used one, which is basically what everyone uh, watching will have. Yeah, again, about 30 or 40 grams. So I wanted to repeat this test myself. Here we have the Gully Kit sticks. and we have around 50 to 60 grams. Now here's the potentiometer sticks. And with these we have 40 to 50. And here we have the K-Silver sticks that I just bought. And again we have 40 to 50. And from my tests I can say that these are much closer to the original sticks. Since I want to compare the sticks later, I got the spare from my friend. I'll install the K-Silver on those and later we'll test all the three of them. I opened the Joy-Con and replaced the stick. And I tested the stick before soldering the wire and I had the same problem from that first video. I couldn't calibrate the stick. So now we have to solder the wires. 
These are the soldering points for the normal Joy-Cons. And there's also a new revision of Joy-Cons from the OLED switch. This one is much harder to install on the left Joy-Con. Luckily, this left Joy-Con is the new revision, so I'll show the installation on the hardest model. The points for soldering on this board are very, very small. Here's the size of them compared to my thumb. The first thing I did was check the connections with a multimeter. We have continuity on these three points, which means they're essentially the same. So if you end up bridging these, it's not a big deal. On the other side, these three points are on the same line. Here's a closer look with the safe points highlighted. And here's the safe points for soldering on the other side. I soldered the wires and checked the connections with a multimeter again. But notice here that I have a bridge between the two points and the resistor, and because of that the Joy-Con still didn't work properly. So I cleaned the solder and soldered it again to this lower point. And it worked! Now the sticks are much more centered, and I can calibrate them. Additionally, if you turn off the switch, you won't lose the calibration. Now all that was left to do is install the sticks on the right Joy-Con. The right Joy-Con is much easier to install because the points are much bigger. These wires are coated, so there's no problem if they touch other points of the board. Also, if you have a switch light, you don't have to solder any additional wires. Just replace the sticks and it will work. Now let's make the final comparison. Unfortunately, the K-Silver sticks also have dead zones on the outer side. And it's the same dead zone for all directions. And here's the dead zones on the Gully Kid sticks. And that's it, we have a new option for Hall Effect sticks on Joy-Cons. But you should only get those if you don't like the increased resistance of the Gully Kit modules. Also, the rubber on the K-Silver analogs are much closer to the originals than the Gully Kit ones. The rubber on the Gully Kit sticks are much less grippy, that's something that I mentioned when I reviewed them. The only advantage of the Gully Kit over the K-Silver is the removable caps.
In my opinion, the KC over modules are better. I definitely preferred the original resistance and increased grip of the rubber than removable caps. Also, some stores are selling the modules with an additional adapter. This one has an adapter from K-Silver. It has a wire, but there's no explanation of what the adapter does. And on this Amazon store, the adapter is from the Lack Gear brand. And on the description, it says that this is a power saving adapter. The stick consumes less power when playing, and it takes no power when your Joy-Con is on sleeping mode. Additionally, it seems that with this adapter you don't need to solder any extra wires. I recommend getting these from the Amazon store, and if it still requires an additional wire, take your Joy-Cons to a game repair shop and get someone to install the wires for you. The soldering required is more delicate and you must have experience to do it. That's it for this video. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.